Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over forces and friction. So let's get started. Now, it's worth looking at the basics of what a force actually is. So it says here that a force is an interaction between two objects. It is a vector quantity and is measured in newtons. And remember, a vector quantity is one that has both a magnitude and a direction. It then says that forces can cause an object to change speed, change direction and change shape. So if we look at change speed first of all, it says a stationary object can start to move or a moving object can speed up or slow down if a force is applied to it. And let's say an object was already moving, if you apply a force to it you can change its direction. And lastly change shape, if you apply a force to an object you can deform it or it changes shape of it, such as crushing a can of fizzy juice or compressing a foam ball. And there are two types of forces that you need to be aware of, so these are called contact forces and non-contact forces. Now a contact force first of all is a force applied to an object by another body that is in direct contact with it. For example, a push, pull or twist. And these are the three most common types of contact forces, so let's say you're pulling a door, pushing a door shut or turning the handle on a door. Or another twist action might be getting the lid off a bottle. On the other hand, we have non-contact forces and we say that a non-contact force is a force applied to an object by another body that is not in direct contact with it. For example, gravity, magnetism or electrostatic forces. And looking at the pictures here, the first one shows you an apple falling due to gravity on Sir Isaac Newton's head. And we know that gravity is the force acting downwards on all objects. We then have a picture demonstrating a non-Newtonian fluid which is interacting with a magnet, but it's doing so at a distance. There's no physical contact between the two objects. And that's because the substance here has magnetic properties, so it's able to respond to a magnet coming close to it. And lastly, we have electrostatic forces, which you might have seen before, and demonstrations of this include things like rubbing a balloon on your jumper or your hair and then making your hair stand up or in this case picking up little bits of paper with the charged surface of the balloon and you could also deflect a stream of water using the charge in the balloon or a charged rod or make the balloon itself stick to a wall or use a van de Graaff generator and so on. Now we're going to look at a specific type of force which is called friction and you've probably already seen this in previous years of science and physics but we define friction first of all as a force which opposes the motion of an object and we say it acts between any two surfaces in contact. So let's say you've got an object here, just this simple box which is moving to the right then that means that the frictional force is going to act to the left against the direction of motion and that means that if the object is moving to begin with the friction acts to slow it down. Then says moving objects experience friction due to the contact with a surface, for example road, rails or water. So it could be a vehicle on the road, a train on a train track on the rails or a boat on water. Now I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand friction. So you'll see we have a box here and let's say the box was moving to the right with a force of 200 newtons. So this guy here was pushing the box to the right with 200 newtons and that means that the frictional force is acting to the left, i.e. against the direction of motion. And you'll see we have values of the force here, so we have 94 newtons for the friction force and 200 newtons for the applied force. Now if we were to increase the mass of this object, then that should increase the friction force because it's going to be harder to push. So if we increase the mass there, you'll now see the friction force is larger than the applied force, so the object is going to slow down, i.e. it's going to eventually come to a stop. We could then keep adding masses on there so that it comes to a stop quicker. Another simulation here involves an experiment where you've got some masses, you've got a bench, you've got a Newton balance and you've got this block here. And the block is simply just sitting on the surface and we can measure the force of friction using the Newton balance. And that's because as it says here, the force required to move the block of wood is equal and opposite to the friction force. So if I click on the balance you'll see that we get a value of 2 Newtons for the friction force and this was acting against the direction of motion. We can then add a mass on and this is hopefully going to increase the friction. And now we have a value of 4 newtons and we can add more mass on. Now we have 6 newtons and more mass on there. Gives us a value of 8 newtons. So you can see that as we added more mass onto the wooden block, it made it harder for the block to move and that increased the frictional force. Going back to the notes now, we're going to look at air resistance. 
Now, air resistance, also known as drag, is a type of frictional force, and we say it's caused by air particles coming into contact with an object. And to help you visualize that, just think of a situation that involves air resistance, such as when a skydiver opens a parachute. Because when a skydiver opens their parachute, the air particles are going to come into contact with the large surface area of the material of the parachute. And that is going to produce a large force of air resistance upwards. Now I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand air resistance. Now let's say we wanted to carry out an experiment to investigate the effects of air resistance on different shapes of objects. And you'll see here we have a disc, 60 degree cone, hemisphere, teardrop shape and a sphere. And the setup here is that we have a fan and then below it we have this Newton balance which we can attach our different shapes onto and then measure the force that is exerted from the fan onto the different shapes. Now you might be able to guess which of these shapes is going to be the most streamlined and therefore produce the smallest amount of air resistance. But let's just compare them all. So let's put the disc on there and let's zero the balance and then let's turn on the fan. So you'll see there's lots of force exerted on the disc here because it's not a very streamlined shape. So we've got roughly 10 newtons on the balance there or even more than that because it's obviously maxed out the balance. Let's now try the 60 degree cone and again let's zero the newton balance and switch on the fan. So this time you'll see just under 6 newtons for that one. Now we can try the hemisphere and again zero the balance and turn on the fan. This time we're getting about 4 newtons. Let's try the sphere this time and zero the balance and turn on the fan. So this time we're getting about just under two newtons and lastly let's try the teardrop. So turning on the fan here you can see we've got just under one newton. So we would say that the teardrop shape is actually the most streamlined i.e. it's producing the smallest amount of air resistance because we've got the smallest force on the newton balance here. And that means that the air from the fan is passing very nicely around the shape of the teardrop rather than colliding head on with it. Going back to the notes now, we're going to look at ways in which we can increase friction and also decrease friction. So to increase friction, first of all, we can increase the size of the surface areas that rub together or we can use materials with rougher surface areas. And some examples of this include wide car tires with large treads, and the treads of a tire are the grooves that you can see in this picture. So the wider the tire, the more surface area is going to be in contact with the ground, and therefore the larger the friction force. We could also say wide soles of shoes. So if you wanted to increase friction with the ground, you could increase the surface area of your shoes rubber grips on shoes. So if you were playing sports, for example, you might want to wear shoes with studs on them. Brakes on a bike is another important one. So in order to slow down on a bike, you need to increase the friction between the brake pads and the wheels. Weightlifters or gymnasts rubbing chalk on their hands, as shown in the picture here, that is going to increase the friction between their hands and the bars or whatever they are holding. And lastly, we have skydivers using large parachutes to slow down. They need to increase their air resistance to do that by opening the parachute. Or it could be a space shuttle doing the same sort of thing to land on a planet with an atmosphere. Lastly, we have ways to decrease friction. So we can use lubricant, for example, a fluid or a thin layer of air. And fluids could include things like oil, such as WD-40 to spray on a squeaky hinge, or a thin layer of air, such as in an air hockey table. We could also streamline the shape of an object, such as a car or a vehicle. So examples here include spraying WD-40 on the hinge of a door to stop it squeaking and to allow it to move more easily with less friction. An air hockey table, as shown in the picture here, which has lots of tiny holes on the surface of the table which have air coming out of them and that produces a thin layer of air over the surface to allow the puck to move. We then have streamlined shapes of supercars so there's one shown here where the air is going to easily pass over the body of the car. And that's going to reduce the effects of drag or friction acting on it which is going to allow it to travel faster. We also have cyclists which can wear tight fitting clothes and wear streamlined helmets as shown here. Things like their crouched position and having solid wheels sometimes also helps to reduce the friction. Now I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand the effects of friction. So here we have useful friction which is increasing friction and these are on the brakes of a car. So if I click play the car is moving but I can apply the brakes to bring it to a stop fairly quickly. And this is in nice dry weather conditions. But if we turn the rain on this time you'll see that it takes longer for the car to come to a stop and that's because we have decreased the friction between the tires and the road. Next we have car design. So we've said that streamlining the shape of a car can reduce friction. So if I click play here, you'll see the car which is not streamlined to begin with, but then it changes into a car that is streamlined. So you can see the change in the speed here, hopefully, when we've got a more streamlined car, it's going to speed up. 
And lastly, we have lubrication. So here we have some kind of mechanism and we can apply oil to that to decrease the friction and make it move more easily. And lastly, streamlining. Here we've got a lorry and a motorbike and we can click on them to see how changing the shape on the front of the vehicle could actually allow the air to pass more easily over it, i.e. to make it more streamlined. So for the lorry, the lines or arrows here are showing you how the air is passing over that object. Now you'll see here we have some jagged edges, so the air is going to simply just hit off those and move up the way. But we can make that shape more streamlined by doing this, so the air is going to curve more easily over that object. And we could do a similar thing for the motorbike here, so you'll see the air coming in from the right, and then it's hitting off all these parts of this motorcyclist. But we could streamline that shape as shown, and that means the air is going to pass more easily over it to decrease the air resistance or decrease the friction. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.